wedding speeches. They can be a source of anxiety and stress for many. It's an important occasion, and if you get it wrong, you might ruin everything. <laughs> but we have a fix for you. We've used science, or if not science, at least art. And we have some techniques that we're going to share with you that will guarantee that you end up with a funny, memorable, and inspiring speech if you follow our simple recommendations. So first, I want you to imagine that you got the call. You weren't expecting it. You thought you were just going to be a guest, eat a lot of cake, maybe some pie. But it turns out someone fell ill, and you have to now write a speech or a toast. Pick whatever it might be. How do you feel? A little flustered? A little concerned? Maybe not ready? So uh, imagine your friend, who again loves rotary telephones and is a traditionalist about this, <laughs> wants you to give this speech. You're the maid of honor, the best man, whatever it might be. What are you going to do? What's the worst that could happen? It turns out a lot, like we talked about. One, you might end up in a Twilight movie, but more seriously, it's an important moment where you're going to have the attention of a lot of people. And you need to use that attention effectively to, to bring everyone together in a, in a powerful way. So what we have here is a better process, which we think will deliver you a better outcome. This is, these are my actual friends. This is not a stock photo. This is Gushin and Angel. Uh, I didn't give a speech at the wedding, but those who did followed this recipe, and they're happily together. That's really the best I can promise at this point. But I know that it went well. So we're going to talk about three things today. Next slide. Uh, first, how you can write that speech, what the structure, what the skeleton of it should be like, how you can pick the stories that will be effective. Number two, how you can lead the audience, how you can tell it, some techniques and guidance on the emotional journey. And then number three, some proof points about how we know that this works personally and how powerful it is. So with that, we'll talk first about how to write it. So how to write it. First, to understand the objective. The objective of the wedding speech is to introduce the couple to the audience. So make sure that you're speaking to the room, not on behalf of the room. And also, at the same time, always remember this is an occasion about the couple. It's not about you. So in terms of constructing the speech, there's a simple formula that we can follow, and it's called 312. What does 312 stand for? You might be wondering, so I'm here to tell you. 3 stands for third person. When you open the speech, you want to share a story, funny story, or a warm memory about the couple. If you, there are certain personality traits that you want to convey to the room, always, such as loyalty or sense of humor, always tell it through a story. Because stories are easier to remember and they make longer lasting impressions. So give yourself some time to think about what you want to tell the room. It could be when the couple first got together, or if there's something that stands out in their relationship, or you might pick up a memory that you and your friend, i.e. the bride or the groom, share with each other, or, or share with you, and make sure you tie it to the wedding. So that's three. One is your emotions. It stands for first person. This is a time when you share your, uh, your own feelings about the couple and tell it to the room. Say something like, it fills my heart with joy to be here today. Two stands for second person. Um, this is when you turn to the couple, you address them directly, and wish them best on their journey together. And you wrap up your, uh, wrap up your speech with a simple toast to the future. Um, pretty simple, right? Well, actually, one more thing. Um, we recommend that uh, keeping the story short and simple is the, the way to go. Because, and we think about five minutes is probably around the perfect amount of time for you to tell one or two stories, long enough to get your points across, but short enough to maintain guests' attention. But on a second thought, after this class, we're all going to be incredibly captivating public speakers. So this rule might not apply to you. OK, now we have the method to put up the content, but how to lead the audience and deliver the content to the audience. We design another framework called emotional emotional journey based delivery. Let's look at them. So for the first phase, we will talk about a funny, funny story or memory. As mentioned before, the story or memory is about the couple, not about you. Your job here is to lead attention from the audience to the couple. And the emotion, and, and you want to evoke emotion from the audience that are like, wow, that is so interesting. I feel so touched. I feel so moved today. If you can do that, you went for this wrong. 
it's absolutely fine for you to talk about some anecdote like, let me tell you, the groom used to run nakedly around the campus to celebrate the award final. And only after he got off the coast, he noticed he had another exam over the next week. <laughs> or something touching. Uh, one voted for Hillary, another voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. After one year, they're still together, and they still want to get married today. Mm -hmm. Okay, for, for the second phase, you want to share your feeling. It's your time to share your personal feeling. At that time, you are the delegate for audience. If your feeling can represent the emotions, sentiments of the audience, you make this job done. Your feeling could be like a confession to the, to the, to the man. I, I, I just want to marry you as well, instead of being your best man. Or something like looking at the embarrassment of your face while you're naked. That was truly my best moment in my life. OK, for the last phase, last phase of emotional peak, uh, it's the best time for you to smile authentically or cry authentically, or smile and cry simultaneously and authentically, if you can do that. <laughs> However, never smile only because your fake crying is too funny. Making wishes in the last phase require authenticity from bottom of your heart. So with your true heart, please join me to wish the true love for the couple, for this one precious life, and even life after this. All right, so what, what I'd like to do is talk through a, a story when I actually had the opportunity to use this three run two framework to deliver a best man speech for my college friend Jason and his wife Liza. My situation was a little unique because I had not met Liza until the weekend of the wedding, so I had to modify some of this framework. So for story three, I told a story about Jason and I when in college, uh, he convinced me, then a super awkward, very uncoordinated engineer, <coughs> to take the lead front and center dance spot on a routine that he had choreographed to Britney Spears' Oops, I Did It Again. Mm -hmm. If you recall, this is, this is her outfit there. Um, so, from the day of the performance, moving forward, I, ter I transformed from this awkward, socially uncomfortable engineer to an awkward, socially uncomfortable engineer that could dance. And Jason always told me that I should always remember that he created me and that I should always remember to give credit where credit was due. I promised him at the age of 20 that I would never forget where I came from and I made good on that promise during my speech in this section of the wedding telling him, Jason, I just want you to know I've never forgotten everything you've done for me and the fact that you empowered me to achieve new heights that I never thought were possible. I took the extra step to connect it to Liza to say, I know the two of you have the ability to empower each other to do things that neither of you knew were possible before you met each other. For section one, um, my emotions towards the couple. My observation in meeting and seeing their, their dynamic over the weekend is they argued consistently, but always managed to come out with some sort of agreement that was significantly better than where either of them had started um, at the beginning of the argument. So I spoke to the inspiration and the hope that I felt for relationships just in general and seeing how they were able to emerge from arguments and truly bring out the best in each other. For section two, a second person inspiration of the audience. Um, I was in a unique situation where Jason's family spoke almost exclusively Cantonese and Liza's family spoke only English. So in order to bridge the gap between, uh, between these two parties, what I did is I memorized four wedding proverbs in Cantonese and English and recited them one by one um, in each language. And I saw the eyes light up of the audience um, as they heard the, the proverbs in their own single language, and then invited everybody to raise a glass to the future of Liza and Jason. Either the combination of uh, the two languages being spoken or the Britney Spears uh, anecdote brought everybody together, um, and as everybody was very motivated to go to the dance floor immediately after, and the two families who had been relatively separate previously shared a moment of connection on the dance floor. Jason debuted his amazing dance skills for Liza's family for the first time, and they became all the more convinced that she had chosen the right man to marry. One year later, I received a phone call from Jason um, indicating that he and Liza had chosen to name their firstborn son Matthew after yours truly. <laughs> Clearly a testament to the strength of the 312 framework. <laughs> So the 312 framework can enable you to develop a speech that is memorable, inspirational, and funny um, for the wedding couple that you, are, uh, that you are speaking to and connecting them to their audience. And if you're lucky, you may just get the name of their firstborn child in the process. Thank you. <laughs>